So I've been talking a lot about dry eye, and a few weeks ago I posted a video about some awesome lid wipes. I'll link it above. One of my viewers left a comment of a very timely article that had just come out that said, hey, one of the ingredients in the wipes you told us about, tea tree oil, is actually killing my Bohmian glands. Is that true? So today, we're gonna talk about it. Welcome to Salisbury Eye Care and Eyewear. I'm Dr. D. My goal is to arm you with the knowledge you need to take control of your eye health and have the best vision possible. Like and subscribe for videos every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Hello, Dr. D here. I'm a doctor of optometry with my own private practice. I'm residency trained in ocular disease and I specialize in dry eye. On this channel, I make educational videos about eye health and vision products. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and hit that bell below so that you never miss a video. Today's video has a lot of meat to it. There's a lot of references, and so I made sure to leave them down in the um, description below so you can check that out. Today, we're gonna be going over a study that was done at Harvard and Mass Eye and Ear, some of the scientists from there, about tea tree oil and its effect on the bibomian glands. This came out literally like two days after I had posted a video about some lid wipes containing tea tree oil and I got a comment asking my opinion on it. So today we're gonna to break down the study. It's um, good points and bad points. Some of my thoughts on, um, you know, I'm gonna take into consideration the 10, 11 years I've had now of treating Demodex and um, treating the, the lids with tea tree oil. So we'll talk a little bit about personal clinical experience. We'll talk about the study itself, what it tells us and what it doesn't. And this one's a pretty good one. So let's get to school, my pupils. Okay, pupils, let's go to high school. Okay, so we're gonna unpack a couple of things first. I feel like that's a very 2020 thing to say. Um, such a weird phrase. But anyway, I, I really wanna go back kind of historically and talk to you about three things before I talk to you about this particular study. So one of those is meibomian gland dysfunction. The other one is Demodex, Demodex follicularum and Demodex brevis. These are parasitic eyelid mites. And the third is tea tree oil. What is it before we get into this study? So number one, meibomian gland dysfunction is really a multifactorial disease. If you're suffering from meibomian gland dysfunction, you might notice literally thickened eyelids. If it's bad enough, you can see thickening of your eyelid margins. You can see redness of the lid itself. You may have dry eye symptoms like redness, irritation, foreign body sensation, stinging, burning, watering, light sensitivity. So meibomian gland dysfunction, it is out there, it is prevalent, and it affects how people's eyes feel and also how you see. Now Demodex follicularum, I'm actually making an entire video about this little critter. Um, but this guy is a mite, a parasitic mite that lives in the eyelash margin, right in those lash follicles actually. So they feast on your dead skin cells and bacteria that's on the lid margin, and they wreak all kinds of havoc. They contribute to this redness and irritation and swelling of the eyelids. And finally, we have tea tree oil. So tea tree oil has been the mainstay in treatment for Demodex blepharitis or meibomian gland dysfunction for you know five to ten years somewhere in there now tea tree oil is applied to the eyelids in a, a couple of different ways if you're familiar with tea tree oil as an essential oil it's actually pretty caustic right so you would never want to apply it to your skin without some sort of carrier oil having it be diluted in some way and there's commercially available preparations that are meant to be used around the eyelid margin that's gonna be in a lot lower concentration. And I literally recommend these every single day. There are probably six or eight YouTube videos where I'm talking about lid wipes and their advantages for treating blepharitis and dry eye disease and Demodex. And so you can imagine seeing a study that says, oh no, that's toxic to the very cells that you're, you know, the very glands that you're applying it to. That was pretty concerning as soon as I saw the study. So with tea tree, you know, by putting my patients on these wipes, what I'm trying to do is give them an effective concentration such that it will control the colonization of Demodex, right? It's pretty difficult to eradicate Demodex completely from your skin. The research shows that it's found basically in everybody over 40 years old, but it gets higher and higher, so the concentration or the amount of Demodex you have living on your skin 
gets much, much higher the older you get. So patients over 70 or 75, pretty much everybody, 100%, will have Demodex on their lashes at that point. In the research I looked at, I found that really the effective treatment for Demodex is two lid wipes a day. So you wanna do morning and night every day for six weeks. And the most important factor is the terpenin 401 component of tea tree oil. So that's the portion of tea tree oil that's so effective in killing these mites. So if my wipes are a 30 to 40 or a lot of these don't actually say the concentration of tea tree oil, but I was able to reach out to some of my manufacturers and find out, and at least one of those is kind of in that 30 to 48% range. They really can't even pin it down. But that brings your actual terpenin 401 concentration to about 0.1 to 0.12%. Now that's gonna be important when we talk about the study, um, because that percentage point was looked at within the study. So the actual penetration of then that component of the tea tree oil is only about two to 4%, and then there's the 24 hour retention rate typically within the glands themselves. You can see that it gets very complicated when you start to think about, okay, what am I prescribing? What's the concentration of tea tree oil? And then what is the true concentration that not only makes it to the gland, but stays there for an amount of time that would be long enough to cause a gland problem? Just sort of catalog that in your brain as we talk about the study, because that'll become relevant. All right, so this study was published in Cornea, um, September 16th of this year. So we'll link the study down below. But the objective was to look at meibomian gland cells, tea tree oil, and the effect that was had over some period of time. But here's the thing. The study was done as an in vitro study, not in vivo. So let's talk about what that means. So when you talk about in vitro studies, these are done outside of the normal biological context. That means that this was not studied in an actual person in their meibomian glands. This was done in a laboratory setting under perfect conditions and constant exposure of the gland actually to the tea tree oil, which is not exactly how tea tree oil is used in everyday life or in clinic, right? We're using it just twice a day, a pass over the eyelids. So that's where a lot of my discussion comes from. So it's really interesting and certainly the study says hey, tea tree oil is toxic to meibomian gland cells. And a lot of my colleagues came out and posted on their social media platforms, only use tea tree oil under the direction of a doctor. I think that's really safe advice. I think that's totally fine. But I can tell you that I'm using tea tree oil in all of my patients just the same as I was before this study. And there's a few reasons why. One, the study was in vitro, not in vivo. Two, the 0.1% T40 exposure affected the cells slightly after five days of constant exposure. So when I think about my meibomian gland dysfunction patients, my Demodex patients, how much tea tree oil is actually making it into the meibomian gland? How long is it sitting there? In a clinical setting, how relevant is this really? And these are just questions I have that I think will come to light with more research. We're treating typically in a setting where the glands are actually impacted anyway. And so does the tea tree oil actually make it down into the meibomian glands, causing further damage, making their situation worse? Or because their glands are already impacted, is it mostly sitting up there at the surface and taking care of the demodex so that we can then implement other therapies to clear those blocked meibomian glands and move their treatment along. So these are just some thoughts I have. I think it's a really interesting study. Definitely gives food for thought as we go forward. Definitely warrants more investigation. And I think for me, it's made me more critical of the tea tree oil that I'm recommending to my patients. So I just admitted to you, it's been a while since I looked at concentration levels and what is the delivery to the glands and the most recent research. So. Above all else, I wanna thank you because without my listeners and, and subscribers commenting and showing me the latest, I would have missed that one. So it's really interesting. Just time will tell what it's actually gonna do for clinical practice. As for me right now, still RXing tea tree oil, still watching patients carefully, and really trying to control those Demodex infections. 
I want to thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a little more research intensive um, and also kind of theoretical. Uh, these are all just my opinions and thoughts. Um, more research is definitely needed to prove or disprove, right? And that's the beauty of science. So again, thanks for watching. I'll see you next Wednesday at 8 p.m. See you later.